Hi, I'm Dr. Craig Chalkwist. Welcome to Gnostications, a series of short talks on how to apply the ideas and principles of Hermeticism. Hermeticism is an earth-honoring, cosmos-embracing wisdom path, ultimately from ancient Egypt, from where it mixed with Jewish, Iranian, Greek, and Indian traditions and became a world-circling philosophy of re-enchantment. Hermeticism strives to bring clarity to the mind, discernment to speech, knowledge of self, and therapy for the soul. It offers ideas and practices for using imagination as a source of knowledge, relationality, and visioning of the kinds of just and delightful community we would actually enjoy belonging to. You can think of these free talks as homilies, sermonettes, short discourses, or even Dharma talks. Each is built around a quotation from the Hermetica, the literature of Hermeticism, and emphasizes application. How do we actually live these truths? I will also leave you some links to relevant sources. A bit about your host and presenter. I started out in psychotherapy in the marriage and family therapy program, and I practiced that for a number of years on and off. My PhD is in depth psychology, which studies the relations between conscious and unconscious, particularly from a Jungian point of view. I'm core faculty at the California Institute of Integral Studies in the East-West program, and I'm also a doctoral student in philosophy, cosmology, and consciousness at the California Institute. Hermeticism is not a belief system or a religion. Although psychological, it goes beyond psychology. It does not reject either psychology or religion, but it does appeal to spiritual or not religious folks, and also to seekers of awe, wonder, and wisdom. There's no dogma, no holy book, no clergy, no authority. Hermeticism has a strong ethical component, but does not preach or moralize. Traditionally, Hermeticism includes Gnosticism, alchemy, oracles, dream studies, astronomy, astrology, herbals, and plant medicine, storytelling and writing down of sacred lore, and various kinds of magic and ritual work. A little bit about the name Hermeticism. It was called the Way of Hermes before, let's say, 1463 to 1471. That was the year that Marsilio Ficino translated parts of the Hermeticum and it became popular in Europe. Ultimately, Hermeticism, as in Hermes though, refers to Hermes Trismegistus, which means thrice great, a term that was used much earlier to apply to Thoth, the Egyptian god of magic, wisdom, reconciliation, healing, writing, sacred lore, divination, and a number of other things. Therefore, the way of Hermes is not the way of the trickster, it is the way of the mage. So let's say a little bit about practical uses of a wisdom path, in other words, philosophy. Not abstraction, not big systems that are hard to understand, but we all have a philosophy, really. We all have some framework that tells us what goals to pursue, what values are worthwhile, who we are in the world. And one could sum it up by saying, it's the story about what works for us and who we are here and how we are with, it, with each other. A philosophy helps us somehow probe deeply into the big questions, the perennial questions. And if we can get clear on our values, then we also get clear on our goals and the actions that we could take. So that's the kind of philosophy that we can actually live and not just think about. Philosophy helps us fight off what Jung called, Carl Jung called isms, which are ideologies that make us hate each other and exploit each other. Philosophical inquiry lets us see through isms and it opens the way to new ideas, inspirations, dreams, and all of these can last longer than quick fixes, bottom line solutions, they recognize no borders, and they survive through any hardships. So this kind of philosophy is 
not just how to stay alive in an increasingly perilous world, but why and what we live for. Hermeticism has had an enormous impact on world culture. The Renaissance, Da Vinci, Durer the artist, Roger Bacon, William Blake, John Donne, Shakespeare, Milton, Mozart, Goethe, Hermann Hesse, contemplative Christianity at one time was friendly with Hermeticism, the tale of Parsifal, the knight, Thomas More's Utopia, Johann Herder, Sufism is heavily indebted to Hermeticism, Jungian psychology as well. Scientific achievement in the Islamic world, which is where the scientific method ultimately comes from. The Royal Society's foundation in England, and all kinds of scientists embracing Hermeticism, including Copernicus and Newton. Today, we see a resurgence of Hermeticism, not just in interest in romantic philosophy and poetry, but films like The Matrix and The Truman Show. I think Hermeticism has possibilities for a post-belief, post-religious, earth-revering wisdom path that embraces both science and spirit. I call my version of this update Terranosis. Hermeticism can help us create what Murbat Nasser calls Hermetic hope, a sense of our potential as human beings to become fully human and a trust that we can find our way toward better futures. Because in the end, things don't have to be this way for ourselves, for what the Hermeticum identifies as our whole human family, and for Earth. I do hope you find these talks enjoyable, useful, practical, and maybe even a little bit transformational. Thanks so much.